Welcome to Unleashing the World of Music and Poetry. My name is Tammy Bowers, but everybody likes to call me Goldie, and I am so happy that you are joining us for tonight's show. We have with us songwriter Michael Peloso, and tonight we're going to talk about his brand new album that was just released yesterday called Life's Little Lessons. So to get us started with tonight's show, here is that interview with songwriter Michael Peloso. So thank you, uh, Michael, for joining us this evening. I appreciate you taking time out of your world and being a part of ours. So um, let's talk about what's going on in your world. Right now, you've got this brand new album that just re was released yesterday. So it's called Life's Little Accidents. So let's talk about that a little bit and, and your journey to completing that album. Yeah, it's been a, it's been quite a ride. Uh, I did a, um, you know, I've written for other artists for years and, you know, I was always comfortable behind the scenes and uh, just being the, you know, let everyone else get the credit. And then I've worked with Natalie Jean for a while and we've written some things together. I've written some things for her and she was always pushing. She's like, you know, you got to do your own. Just want at least once do something do take control of it and do your own. Cause a lot of times I would just give, whether it be the lyrics or a melody or something, I give it to the artist and make it their own. Like, you know, that's for them. They put it out in the world. And for me, I step back, but this was a, you know, teetering back. And then I, you know, COVID kind of hit and I just, you know, went through a lot and I had a lot to say. And um, so I was just very much saying, okay, you know, I'm going to go and do this. And, you know, I've, this is the first time I'm the actual face of the project. So, you know, from writing it and co-written two songs and, um, but writing the rest and coming up with the melodies and just working with the other artists and co-producing it and with Matthew Shell, who was just tremendous. Uh, we worked, him and I worked on a couple other things, my little Four Simple Notes project, where we did a couple ja more jazzier songs a couple of years ago. And, uh, you know, he helped guide me through and we arranged it together and you wouldn't know it, but none of us were ever in the same room during COVID. Oh my goodness. Would all, yeah. Would offer some challenge, but you know, it's the beauty. I like to sit and record, you know, like sit and write with folks and in the same room. But in this case, this was truly a, no one was in the same room at the same time. And with technology, the beauty of technology, we were able to, uh, accomplish it and, you know, I'm very proud of the work and that's all, that's all I can do, you know, and I put it out there and I hope folks respond to it and listen to the messages and, you know, and they can relate to it. So it's right. a big journey. So, right. So let's talk about a couple of songs. So letting go, you co-wrote that with um, the young lady you were speaking of, yeah. and it also made it on the Grammy ballot. So let's talk about your experience with that. Yeah, I made it for consideration, but it's uh, because the ballot is really considered last right. But it went very far. I mean, a lot of folks really connected to that song, and you know, it has a universal message. Um, and some of this album too is kind of, for instance, the rear view song. I call it "Letting Go" too, but um, part two. But it's um, you know, you just you go through things in life, and you know, certain aspects, you know, things you can't relate to. And I always say the songs I've written the last couple of years, I could never write when I was 20. Um, so with life experiences, you just go through things and you learn as you get older that sometimes no matter what it is, whether it's a relationship or whether it's a job or anything, you know, with that song, sometimes you have to be the one to just say, okay, that's it. I need to move on and, you know, focus on something else. And mm -hmm you know, your energy, because at some point you realize that, you know, it's just not worth it. For right. whatever it is. And, you know, when it, you know, it comes down to yourself and your self being that, you know, maybe you need to take a step back and say, it's okay, you know, yeah. to let go, you know, yeah. if you have to, whatever that is, whatever that's going on in your life. So that's what that song was about. And it, it did, like I said, it got a lot of, um, 
got a lot of play and it got a lot of recognition. And, you know, I'm proud of the effort from everyone, from Natalie and Levi Moore. They did a, you know, and the funny story, just real quick about that lyrically was I originally wrote that song and I didn't like the original that came out. And I rewrote every word other than the letting go. And Natalie came to me and said, I'm looking for a duet. And I just said, here, I have these words. What do you think? And that's how it came to be. But it was like one of the only songs where I actually cringed. And I was like, I just didn't like it. <laughs> I just kept those three words because I loved that title. And, um, and that's where it happened. And I actually, once I got going, I wrote it in about 15 minutes. Yeah, it's a it's a beautiful song. I've listened to it several times and, and it does. It talks about just letting go and it's OK. Like you said, it's OK to let go. And I think a lot of times that people, they don't know how to let go and they, they feel like they have to hold on. But it's OK to let yeah. go. And I love that. I love that. Love that. Um, so Shed My Skin. Let's talk a little bit about that song, because that's kind of personal. And, um, you know, like I said before, you can um, indulge as much as you like, but you, you went through a, you went through a traumatic experience. Yeah. yeah. It was, um, four years ago, probably about two weeks ago, it literally is four years ago. I, um, I was going through what turned out to be stage four colon cancer and it mm -hmm. spread to my, um, liver as well, but I didn't have colon cancer, but it spread. So they called stage four, but they were able to, I was on my deathbed. Um, there was a lot that went on. I was misdiagnosed, but it wasn't really the doctor's fault because sometimes it masks that. So going through that and I went through a period of, you know, my marriage ended, unfortunately, around that time, you know, there was a lot going on. It wasn't a good environment and the words just came out. Um, I happened to be listening to a five for fighting song one day and I don't even recall. I love their band and um, the words just flowed and it was about me just shedding my skin of just that cancer and, you know, just saying like, yes, I was given a second chance and I wanted to just, you know, I'm not that person who was just always just angry because chemo does change you a little bit sometimes and you're sick. And sometimes, you know, I'm coming from a person who was never sick prior. And, you know, when you get this and you're just, Hey, I need to, you know, I got to shed my skin of this. I just, that's, I don't want that anymore. I didn't want who I became in a way, you know, just, you know, just upset with, everything and how to handle it. And I could have handled things differently, mm -hmm. you know, the certain, certain aspects. Yes. I probably could have, you know, hindsight is 2020, yeah. but you know, you look back now and it's like, yeah, maybe I could have, or maybe I couldn't, but I just wanted to get rid of that cancer that was inside of me and just, you know, have this whole experience of like, wow, you know, life is wonderful. And even sometimes in the bad times, it's still just wonderful to be alive. And you know, what this world has to offer. And that was it. I just didn't want to be that sick person anymore, that kind of scared person of things. And that's basically what it was, was just shedding it. And that was the first set of lyrics. I didn't really have a melody, um, but it was the first set of lyrics that I wrote for the album, what well, turned out to be for mm -hmm. the album. Yeah. It's just basically what the whole album was kind of based off of was that. And um, originally, then when I started writing it, I wrote it on the keyboards. But then Matthew said, you know what, we're talking about shedding, we're talking about being very bare, let's just do it as an acoustic. Mm -hmm. and Sammy, the guitarist, um, played both the electric and acoustic on it. And that's really the only song that it's just him, you know, there's nobody else on it, but it fits, you know, and it's all about the song to me. It didn't have to be about who played or whatever. And Juliet, who's a, Juliet Lines, who's a singer out in California, I met a couple of years ago. Um, you know, I, we spoke and I said, I wanted you on a song and she ended up on three on the album, right? So that's how it works sometimes. And she just, you know, in three days she had the vocals and that song yeah. came very quickly when it came. And that's what it's about. It's just about whatever you're doing, you know, just if you don't like something, you know, you just, you can always change and you can always reinvent yourself and it's never too late in life. 
That's right. That's right. Well, you've got some very powerful stories within your album and it's, and it's your, and I love, I'm a, I'm a storyteller myself. So it's, uh, that's why people can relate to your album, relate to your songs because they feel like it's their story. Um, and, and they're hearing their story and, and it's kind of telling them how to get through it, which is very inspirational to, it was inspirational to me and, and, um, you know, something cancer is very close to me because it's, I've lost two parents from cancer. And so it's it, it when I read your story about the the behind of shed my skin it, it it hit home and then I listened to the song and and there it was again. So so thank you. Thank you for using your life story to influence and help others through theirs. And that and, you know, normally I don't talk about what my lyrics are about just because you know the beauty of a song is it could mean something to anyone and you. Oh yeah. Song. Right. So to you, it can mean something. Someone can interpret it completely different. I've heard, you know, some stories of what they were about and they don't really know. And, you know, it, and, I, it, and that's the beauty of it. Is the listener can take it and use it for what they want and relate to whatever they want in their life. And if it resonates, you know, then I've done my job is what I've always said. Yeah. So. yeah. Yeah, which is true, which is true. And, and that's, you, you're so right, because I've, I've listened to songs and took it and, and it's affected me in a different way than it affected somebody else. Right, right. Um, so, so that that's very true. You've been writing songs since you were young. Is that correct? Yeah. So when did it all start? I heard it um, and I read that it all started with Ario Speedwagon. <laughs> that, that, was, that was the very first album I bought with my own money um, as a New Jersey kid. And uh, listen, the first album I was given was Alvin and the Chipmunks Christmas. <laughs> but, uh, but um, you know, but I was a New Jersey kid and I heard Keep on Loving You on the radio. And I was just like, wow, like just the power of that song. And I, I know some folks don't like Ario, but it was more of the the power of it and just the, the, the melodies and the power chords and just the vo Kevin Cronin's vocals. And I asked my father and, you know, can we go take me to the store? And he took me to the store and, you know, little behold, he didn't understand what the cover was about. When you look at it now, but um, just that song. And I mean, I played that, they played that record till it was dust. And then I may actually made it a point when it came out on cassette, that that was the first cassette I bought. That was the first CD I bought, and that was the first <laughs> download that I ever received because it meant just so much to me, you know. Mm -hmm. And and just from there, I mean, then my my taste started growing. I mean, I you know I'm a big Tom Waits fan, and I loved you know the arena rock, and I respect all genres of music. I I love it all, you know. And there's crafts. you know. And one thing I don't like is when people say you know something stinks or whatever. It's you know. Art is, you know, it, art's for that person. It, it's just, you know, that's for you and that's what it means to you. And that's great. And, you know, through the years, I mean, you know, I've grown to just love a lot of music just in general. I mean, if, I'm a, I love Stevie Nicks. Oh, um, yes. If I could get Tom Waits, Stevie <laughs> Nicks, and unfortunately, Petty's gone. But if I could get any Lennox and Stevie Nicks or Carol King to sing on or something of mine, I would be in heaven, I would just say, here, here you go, take it. Right. And, I mean, <laughs> you know, they're just, I, I, I just love them so, and, you know, and I've grown, you know, I res respect a lot of bands. There's a lot of bands in the 90s too, you know. I like Hootie and the Blowfish. I know some folks say things, but they write good pop melody songs that feel good songs, and there's nothing wrong with that. And, um, you know, artists of today, I mean, I listen to a whole bunch. I'm a lot more on the indie scene lately, but, um, you know, but like I said, you know, it just all genres of music. I mean, I have, I'm 49, so I have almost five decades of being alive with music, which is a beautiful thing, I, I feel, you know, so. Right, right. I understand that because when I was growing up, I listened to uh, my very first tape was Europe, the final oh. countdown. <laughs> <laughs> the Geico commercial a couple of years ago brought them back. I know. Oh, you were a hair, hair nation girl? Was that what I you was, was, I was. Me, I liked that, Leopard. I liked uh, some of those bands. I mean, you know, 
they're they're talented musicians. I mean, yes, you know, yes, they, they are. I mean, they, they have the spandex, and everybody looks behind it. But I mean, these guys can play. I mean, you know, and they. I mean, right. Slash is, and I mean, Guns and Roses is probably a little different, but I mean, Slash can play. You know, these guys, these these cats can play. Oh uh, yeah, oh yeah. They've got very, they've got a lot of talent, and I don't think I, sometimes people can't get um, beyond the commercial. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And and see the see the talent, and there's so much talent within these bands. It's you know I've I, you know you've been to many concerts. I've been to many concerts, so we know the talent that goes in to be able to uh, create a, a band. And um, somebody must have liked them because we bought the records, you know. <laughs> and I think folks, what don't they realize is a lot of work. How how much work. Even yeah. singers, you know, before when they pose on stage and how they look at the crowd and that that's all rehearsed. That's all like, does this work? Does this mm -hmm. not work? It's all part of the package. And, you know, these they, they, you got to work at it. You know, you, you work hard at the nobody. See, everybody sees the end result. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and they see those songs like some of those songs, you know, and, you know, the commercial songs like you mentioned. But for me, I always seem to like the deeper tracks. Mm -hmm. You know, the songs that don't get released. I've always seen the find myself just liking those songs, you know. But again, yeah. it's all craftsmanship and everything that comes into it. So. Right. I call it the B-side songs that yeah. nobody listens to, the B-side. Oh, and yeah. I love yeah. the B-side songs. And yeah. you mentioned Stevie Nicks, and there's not a day that goes by I don't listen to Stevie Nicks. I mean, I love them. They are amazing. And she has such an iconic um, voice and it's and it's just like heart and, you know they have yeah, such yeah. a you know it's just like them they have their own tone their own style and you know that's what sets them apart from all the others and I, we can talk about music all night but <laughs> <laughs> oh tell me about it she's yeah Amazing. she's my favorite that's who that's who i was blasting in my bedroom and you know when i was getting ready to go to school in the morning to catch the school bus you know <laughs> So. <laughs> with everybody there and there so. so what's in store for you now you've got the album it's been released you've got how many streams do you have so far I, think uh, it was I looked today i'm trying not to look but <laughs> album's got about almost 400 that's, Woo, that's fantastic yeah, it's pretty good. i mean everything's based on streams now sales i don't I don't know yet. I mean, I wouldn't know. And it, that's okay. I think everything's kind of based on streams now because I mean, I printed a couple CDs just to have, but, and I sold a couple of those just and gave some out to family and friends, you know, as a thank you for everything, especially folks who were there with me when I was sick. Um, yeah. But um, yeah. So right now after two days, I mean, it's, it's responding. It's starting to catch on. Uh, Night run was released to AAA radio back in June, just as a teaser. And it, you know, it hit like 35 markets, which was, which was That's really good. good. Yeah. You know, and it was, you know, especially, you know, as my name being an unknown, just as a face. Right. But I mean, they were playing it, playing it in good times. I mean, Detroit was the biggest market right now that hit lately. And it's like I said, you know, it's not playing at 3 a.m. It was actually playing at like 3 p.m., you know, which is good time. You know, it's yeah. it's big to have. And then when you see yourself like played right after John Mayer or the Counting Crows, you know, it's it, 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 it's a nice feeling. I will not, you know, I don't take a single mid second for granted in life and everything that comes to you. And, you know, I'm very grateful for it, all of it. And everybody's support. I just, I can't. And thank you as well for you know, wanting to talk to me. So oh, you know, you're like, welcome. You regarding the album. So oh, well, that's wonderful. Well, we're glad to have you. Um, so where can uh, the, our audience find your album? Sure. Um, it, it's on Amazon if you want a physical copy. I mean, it's on every streaming service already. It's on Spotify, Apple Music, Pandora. Uh, it's on, if you want to purchase through my website, you can, which is MikePelosaMusic.com. Um you know, just all the all the majors. I mean, it's it's there. So, you know, anybody can look out for it, you know, see it on streaming and, you know, find it, look for it. And then, you know, it's 10 songs of just heartfelt songs, I believe. And I think there's something out there for everyone on it. You know, yeah, it's got, it's, mm -hmm. 
Right. It's got it's got a it's got a good variety. That's what I, I was li- I was thinking as I was listening to your songs. It's got a good variety and it's got um, some really good tones. Um, I mean, I could I, I was put, I put it on playing it this morning as I was cooking breakfast and I was like, wow, it's got some got some really good tone some depth to it that I which I really liked so um, yeah, I'm I excited to Evan Evan um, they Evan was the mixer and master of pretty much in the whole album um Ken Lazo to he's out of I gotta give him a shout out he recorded uh Natalie and uh, Art Array's vocals and uh also Eric Fredrickson helped mixing on Night Run um the, I mean we were all behind it and it was just you know it's we, okay. Let's take this. Take this to the car. Do we like it? Uh, does it sound good? No, it doesn't sound good in the car. You know, take it on here. Does not sound good? But we went through it, and you know, it's. I, I think it's a very good quality sounding album. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. And thank you so much for taking time this evening and being a part of our world. And I look forward to seeing all your success and the success of your new album. <laughs> no, thank you very much for you know, taking the time and wanting to speak to me. And I do appreciate it. Say hi to your list. Hi to everybody out there, and uh, you know, please stay safe. And uh, yeah, because it's a crazy world out there. And I hope to see everybody soon. And if you like, you know, reach out anytime. All righty, thank you, Michael. I thank appreciate you. it. Have a good night. Stay you safe. too. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Thank you, Michael, for taking some time out of your world and being a part of ours this evening. It was a pleasure talking with you about your new album, Life's Little Accidents. And thank you to the viewers for your continued love and support. Stay tuned each and every week. We have something for everybody. We have music and movie day. So if you don't know what to watch on Sundays, stay tuned. I'll give you a few hints. Also, we have our tour date show of local and well-known artists around the world. And you can see where they're coming to your town so you won't miss a concert. And, of course, we've got our interviews with our local and world-renowned artists, singers, songwriters, musicians, bands, and poets as well. And as always, smile, stay positive, stay true, and always, always be you. And stay safe. Good night, everyone. Like a wish on